When was the first arithmetic book published in North America? In 1556 the first arithmetic book was published in North America by Brother Juan Diaz Frail, a Franciscan friar. The name of the book was Sumario Compendioso de las Cuentas de Plata y Oro que en los Reinos del Piru. Son necesarias a los mercaders y todo genero de tratantes, con algunas reglas de cantes al arithmetica. The title translates as Comprehensive Summary of the Counting of Silver and Gold. Which, in the kingdoms of Peru, are necessary for merchants and all kinds of traders. The book explained the conversion of gold or into value equivalents in different types of coinage in the old world. Problems that required the use of ratios and proportions. Diaz also included a short chapter on algebra. The first English language mathematics book written in North America was published in 1729 by Isaac Greenwood and titled Arithmetic, Vulgar and Decimal, Vulgar refers to the common people. Greenwood's life was also somewhat vulgar, he was appointed to the first Hollis. Professorship of Mathematics and Natural Philosophy at Harvard University in Massachusetts when it was founded in 1727. By 1737 he was removed for intemperance. Reportedly, he drank too much, and more than likely his views, philosophical and otherwise, differed greatly from those of his colleagues at the university. What are some of the statistics used in baseball? There are numerous statistics used in baseball, including batting and pitching statistics. Batting statistics can be divided into several numbers. The batting average, average, is the number of hits a player makes divided by the number of times at bat. It does not include walks or sacrifice hits. The runs batted in, RBI, is the number of runners who scored on a player's hit. Base on balls, or sacrifice. The on-base plus sluggage, ops, is a good measure of a hitter's ability. This statistic combines getting on base, on base percentage, or OBP, and advancing runners, slugging percentage, or SLG. It is also more accurate thanks to the adjustment 1.2x OBP and SLG. Which compensates for the fact that SLG has a wider range than OBP. Pitching statistics include the ERA and WHIP. The earned run average, ERA, is the earned runs times the innings in a game. Most commonly 9, divided by the innings pitched. The walks plus hits per inning pitched, WHIP records the bases on balls, walks, plus hits divided by innings pitched. It's a good way to measure the approximate number of walks and hits a pitcher allows in each inning that he pitches. It then compares that amount to other pitchers to formulate a pitcher's index. What are some examples of Venn diagrams?
Venn diagrams are schematic illustrations used in logic theory. To show collections of sets and the relationship between them. Overlapping circles represent the sets, or the subjects and predicates in syllogistic logic. The standard way of presenting such diagrams include the intersection of two. Order 2 diagram, 2 3, order 3 diagram, circles. Based on what circles intersect and the areas shaded. A conclusion about the sets may then be read directly from the diagram. Such illustrations can include the union of two sets, the intersection of two sets, the complement of a set, and the complement of the union of two sets. Why has the combination of mathematical analysis methods and computers been so important? The combination of mathematical analysis and computers has been a strong alliance. Especially with regard to engineering, technology, and the sciences. In the past few decades, researchers have used this combination to help predict the weather. Describe in great detail nuclear fusion in the sun, understand the movement of space bodies around the solar system orbital mechanics, and the flow of water in underground aquifers, fluid dynamics. There are also the studies of chaos the unpredictable behavior of nonlinear systems and quantum mechanics. Or the physics of very small particles, both of which entail the use of applied mathematics and computers. In addition, in engineering, and almost all technology. The mathematical analysis computer combination has helped create structures that surround us every day. This includes familiar modes of transportation and communication from plans for airplanes and bridge construction to designing fiber optic cables and cell phone towers. It also includes how engineers design control systems which are used in such diverse areas as robotics, aerospace engineering, and biomedical research. How else is the word algebra used? Algebra may be defined as the subjects of arithmetic and abstract algebra, but there are other meanings. These algebras involve vectors and matrices, the algebra of real numbers, complex numbers, and quaternions, an operator or factor that changes one vector into another. There are also those exotic algebras invented by mathematicians and usually named after the inventor with the majority not truly understood except, perhaps, by their creators. What is a Fourier series? The idea for the Fourier series was developed by French mathematician and physicist Baron Jean Baptiste Joseph Fourier. 1768 to 1830, as an alternate method of expressing a function by the expansion of the function. A Fourier series is actually a specific type of infinite. Mathematical series that involves trigonomic functions. More simply put, 
it is essentially an infinite sum of sine waves. The Fourier series is used in applied mathematics. In engineering and physics, it is used to split up a periodic, or continuous function into a group of simpler terms, in electronics. It is used to express the periodic function seen in waveforms of communication signals. What other variables are often used in statistics? When an experiment is conducted, variables manipulated by the experimenter are called independent variables. Also independent factors. While others measured from the subjects are called dependent variables, also dependent measures. For example, consider a hypothetical experiment on the effect of lack of sleep on reaction time. Subjects either stayed awake, slept for 2 hours for every 24, 5 hours. For every 24, or 8 hours for every 24, they then had their reaction times tested. The independent variables would be the hours slept by each person and the dependent variables would be the reaction time. Some variables can be measured on a continuous scale a continuous variable being one that within the limits the variable ranges can take on any value possible. For example, we can make the time to eat a lunch at a certain restaurant be the continuous variable because it can take any number of minutes or hours to finish the meal. But other variables can only take on a limited number of values or dependent variables. For example, if the variables were a test score from 1 to 10, then only those 10 possible values would be allowed, these are called discrete variables. How do computer models attempt to predict the weather? In general, Computer models used to predict weather use around seven equations that govern how the basic parameters temperature, pressure, and so on change over time in the atmosphere. Scientists call the study of how they can physically and mathematically represent all the processes in the atmosphere dynamics. In reality, Everyone knows computer models can't perfectly predict the weather at this time. This is because of several factors, including errors in the initial conditions. Or the observations the model gets to begin making its forecast, and errors inherent in the model. A computer model can't take into consideration all the factors controlling the weather. Long-term forecasts are even more inaccurate because these two errors are compounded mathematically over time. What are naive and axiomatic set theory? The naive set theory is not one that takes everything for granted. It is actually a branch of mathematics that attempts to formalize the nature of the set using the fewest number of independent axioms possible. But it is not the answer to formalizing sets, 
as it quickly leads to a number of paradoxes. Because of this, mathematicians use a more formal theory called the axiomatic set theory. Which is a version that uses axioms taken as uninterpreted rather than as formalization of pre-existing truths. For more about axiomatic systems, see elsewhere in this chapter. What is Applied Mathematics? Applied Mathematics is not only concerned with using rigorous mathematical methods, but also applications of those methods. It entails a wide range of research in the worlds of biology, computer science, sociology, engineering, physical science, and many other fields, especially in the experimental sciences. In each case, applied mathematics is used by a researcher to more thoroughly understand a particular application or physical phenomena. The many uses of applied mathematics include numerical analysis, linear programming, mathematical modeling and simulation, the mathematics of engineering, mathematical biology, game theory, probability theory, mathematical statistics, financial mathematics, and even cryptography. What is a normalized vector? A normalized, or unit, vector is one in which the sum of the squares of all coordinates is equal to 1. For example, the vector, 2, 2, 0, is not normalized. The vectors, 0 0.707, 0 0.707, 0, 0 0.0, and 1.0, 0, 0.0, 0, 0.0, are normalized. An outward normal is another name for a normalized vector. It represents the direction that a polygon surface or vertex endpoint is facing. Normalized, or unit, vectors are often seen written as x, that is often referred to as a hat. What is a subset and proper subset in set theory? Simply put, a subset is a portion of a set. If set B is a subset of set A, then all elements of set B are also elements in set A. If A and B are equal, then both sets are subsets of themselves. The empty set is also considered a subset of every other set. A proper subset is a subset other than the set itself. What were Pythagoras's other contributions? It is interesting that the Pythagorean theorem was not Pythagoras's only contribution. He is considered the first pure mathematician. He also founded a school that stressed a fourfold division of knowledge, including number theory. Deemed the most important of the pursuits at the school and using only the natural numbers. Music, geometry, and astronomy, 
these subjects were called the quadrivium in the Middle Ages. Along with logic, grammar, and rhetoric. These studies collectively formed what was deemed the essential areas of knowledge for any well-rounded person. Pythagoras not only taught these subjects, but also reincarnation and mysticism. Establishing an order similar to, or perhaps influenced by, the earlier Orphic cult. The true lives of Pythagoras and his followers, who worshipped Pythagoras as a demigod, are a bit of a mystery. As they followed a strict code of secrecy and regarded their mathematical studies as something of a black art. The fundamental belief of the Pythagoreans was that all is number. Or that the entire universe even abstract ethical concepts such as justice could be explained in terms of numbers. But they also had some interesting non-mathematical beliefs, including an aversion to beans. Although the Pythagoreans were influential in the fields of mathematics and geometry. They also made important contributions to astronomy and medicine and were the first to teach that the Earth revolved around a fixed point, the Sun. This idea would be popularized centuries later by Polish astronomer Nicolaus Copernicus, 1473-1543. By the end of the 5th century BCE, the Pythagoreans had become social outcasts. Many of them were killed as people grew angry at the group's interference with traditional religious customs. What is balancing a checkbook? Balancing a checkbook is often a challenge. For some people, forgetting to enter checks written against or deposits made into the account creates the biggest balancing problems. For others, it is not depositing enough money to cover written checks. There really is no art to keeping a checkbook. It is just a matter of checks and balances or debits and credits and a little bit of simple mathematics. To keep a healthy checkbook, there are several things a person can do. For example, keep a running balance of distributed checks in a check ledger. Whenever you write a check, write the amount in the ledger booklet most banks give with the checks. In the proper column, list the check number, who the check is made out to, and any other important information. The amount in the negative, dash, or debit, column, and subtract the check amount from the last balance. Along with making out checks, taking out money, keep a record of deposits made in the checkbook register. Deposits are usually written in the positive column, plus, or credit. Don't let the money get low if the account balance goes into negative numbers. The account does not have enough money to cover the checks. If more money is not put into the checking account at this point, the checks will bounce. Or not clear with sufficient funds. This is not good. Most banks charge substantial fees to the account owner for bounced checks, not the person to whom the check is made out. Whenever you receive your bank statement, check to see if the balance agrees with your checkbook. This is called balancing the checkbook. As you compare the checks that have cleared with the listing in the register, 
Check each off with an X or check mark. Also subtract any bank charges, such as ATM, automated teller machine, fees. If all of the checks have cleared, and all charges have been accounted for, the balance of the checkbook and statement should agree, unless the bank gives interest on checking accounts. If so, add the interest to the checkbook under the plus or credit column. If not all the items have cleared, check the bank statement and note the ones not marked. Total all these outstanding transactions. Subtract the total of the outstanding transactions from the end balance on the bank statement. Then add any deposits that are not on the bank statement to this new balance. The numbers should match the balance in the check register. If they don't, go back over the addition and subtraction in the checkbook register to catch any inaccuracies. Which is often the reason why a checkbook doesn't balance. What is a factor and what does factorization mean? A factor is a portion of a quantity that when multiplied by other factors gives the entire quantity, or product. In order to determine such factors, or divisors, you have to use factorization, also called factoring or to factor. When factoring an integer, it is referred to as prime factorization. When factoring a polynomial, it is called polynomial factorization. What is operations research? Operations research, more commonly called optimization theory, is a form of applied mathematics designed to determine the most efficient way of doing something by using mathematical models. Statistics and algorithms in the decision-making process. It is a branch of mathematics that entails the many diverse areas of optimization and minimization, including the calculus of variations, control theory, decision theory, game theory, linear programming, and many others. Operations research is most often used to analyze complex, real-world systems. Stressing the improvement in or optimization of performance. How is statistical data presented? There are many ways to present statistical data. All of which involve graphical means to translate the results of statistical tests. A histogram is a graphical representation of a distribution function using rectangles. It is also most often constructed from a frequency table, see below. The widths of the rectangles usually indicate the intervals into which the range of observed values are divided. The heights of the rectangles indicate the number of observations that occur in each interval. The shapes of histograms vary depending on the chosen size of the intervals.
What are variables in algebraic equations? Variables are the symbols, usually a letter such as X or Y. Used in algebraic equations that represent an unknown number and on whose value a function, polynomial, and so on, depends. Variables remain unknown until the equation is solved, thus. They are sometimes referred to as unknowns in an algebraic equation. It is not always easy to work with variables. As there are so many letters used throughout various equations. But in many mathematical and scientific texts, there are some variables that are customary to use. What is the reciprocal of a number? The reciprocal of a number is obtained when a given number is divided into one. The results are called the reciprocal of that number. For example, the reciprocal of 6 is 1 divided by 6, or 1 sixth. Reciprocals come in most handy when dividing fractions. See above to learn more about dividing fractions. What is the absolute value of a number? The absolute value of a real number is the number stripped of any negative value. Therefore, the absolute value of a number will always be greater than or equal to zero. Formally, the absolute value is considered the distance of a number from zero on a number line. The symbol for absolute value is the number inside two parallel vertical lines. For example, the absolute value of x is given as x. If the number is negative within the absolute value sign, it will automatically become positive. In numerical form, 3 equals 3 and dash 3 equals 3. When discussing complex numbers, the absolute value often means squaring the numbers, then taking the square root of those numbers. What is statistics? The analysis of events governed by probability is called statistics. In statistics, a group of facts is collected and classified in a methodical manner. Which is why such a study is important to the fields of science. Finance, social research, insurance, engineering, and sundry other areas. In general, the data are grouped according to their relative number. Then certain other values are determined based on the characteristics of the group. The most important part of statistical theory is sampling. This is because in most applications, the statistician is not only interested in the characteristic of the sample but also the characteristics of some much larger population. For information about samples and populations, see below. How do clinical trials use mathematics?
Clinical trials are used to determine whether a new drug or treatment is safe and effective for the general public. In particular, there are several phases to reach a positive or negative conclusion about the drug or treatment. Phase I takes between 20 and 80 patients and determines the safety. Dosage range, or side effects, phase 2 tests the drug or treatment on a larger group. Usually around 100 to 300 people, Phase 3 tests an even larger group of between 1,000 to 3,000 people. And Phase 4 takes place after the drug or treatment has been marketed and is in use. Overall, each phase has a mathematical theme. Each using statistics to determine the possible positive and negative effects of the drug or treatment. What is a logistic equation? A logistic equation, resulting in a curve on a graph, represents the exponential increase in numbers of a species until it reaches the carrying capacity in its specific environment. This carrying capacity, usually referred to by the letter K is the maximum population size that can be regularly sustained by an environment change the environment and K changes for example by such events as adding a predator removing a competitor or adding a parasite When is a set a superset? A superset is one that contains all the elements of a smaller set. For example, if B is a subset of A, then A is a superset of B. In other words, a is a superset of set B if every element in B is in A. Like a proper subset, there are also proper supersets, or a superset that is not the entire set. What did Isaac Newton contribute to mathematical analysis? English mathematician and natural philosopher, otherwise called a physicist. Isaac Newton, 1642-1727, was one of the greatest scientists who ever lived. Overall, he contributed to physics, such as the discovery of his three famous laws of motion, fluid dynamics. Fluid motion, the union of terrestrial and celestial mechanics using the principle of gravitation thus. Explaining Kepler's laws of planetary motion, and he even explained the principle of universal gravitation. By 1665 Newton had not only begun his work on differential calculus, but he also had published one of his greatest scientific works Philosophia Naturalis Principia Mathematica. The mathematical principles of natural philosophy, often shortened to the Principia or just Principia. In it he presents his theories of motion, gravity, and mechanics. Thus explaining the bizarre orbits of comets, tides and tidal variations. The movement of the Earth's axis, called precession, and motion of the Moon. And although he used calculus to find many of his scientific results, 
Newton also explained them using older geometric methods in the book. After all, calculus was very new. Perhaps he was the first scientist writer to make sure everyone understood what he was proposing. Are there other ways of describing polynomials? Yes, there are other ways to describe polynomials. In particular, a polynomial with only one variable is called a univariate polynomial. A multivariate polynomial is one with more than one variable. There are other terms to further define polynomials, including the following. Monomial a monomial is a one-term polynomial, mono means one. For example, 3x is monomial. Binomial a binomial is a two-term polynomial, by means two. For example, 3x210 is a binomial. Trinomial a trinomial is a three term polynomial, tri means three. For example, 4x3 plus 3x plus 6 is a trinomial. What is the discriminate of a quadratic equation? In the quadratic equation ax2 plus bx plus c equals 0, the value of b2 for ac is the discriminate the same numbers and letters that are under the square root sign of the quadratic formula. This is actually the products of the squares of the polynomial root differences. In other words, this quantity characterizes certain properties of the quantity's roots. The discriminate is often used for such mathematical concepts as metrics, modules, quadratic fields, and polynomials. What are the ways credit card companies calculate finance charges? When the credit card issuer calculates the finance charge on a card, it applies a periodic rate to a balance. In order to calculate that balance, the company uses various methods. The most common is the average daily balance method, in which the balance is calculated by taking the amount of debt in the account each day during a specific period and averaging it. The previous balance method uses the outstanding balance at the end of the period to compute the finance charges. The adjusted balance method derives the balance by subtracting any payments made during the cycle from the previous balance, with new purchases not being counted. What are some examples of how early peoples counted? There were several different ways that early civilizations recorded the numbers of things. Some of the earliest archaeological evidence of counting dates from about 35,000 to 20,000 BCE, in which several bones bear regularly spaced notches. Most of these marked bones have been found in Western Europe, including in the Czech Republic and France. 
the purpose of the notches is unclear. But most scientists believe they do represent some method of counting. The marks may represent an early hunter's number of kills. A way of keeping track of inventory, such as sheep or weapons, or a way to track the movement of the sun, moon, or stars across the sky as a kind of crude calendar. Not as far back in time, shepherds in certain parts of West Africa counted the animals in their flocks by using shells and various colored straps. As each sheep passed, the shepherd threaded a corresponding shell onto a white strap until nine shells were reached. As the tenth sheep went by, he would remove the white shells and put one on a blue strap, representing ten. When ten shells, representing 100 sheep, were on the blue strap, a shell would then be placed on a red strap. A color that represented what we would call the next decimal up. This would continue until the entire flock was counted. This is also a good example of the use of base 10. For more information about bases, see Math Basics. Certain cultures also use gestures, such as pointing out parts of the body, to represent numbers. For example, in the former British New Guinea, the Bajalai culture used the following gestures to represent numbers. 1. Left hand little finger, 2. Next finger, 3. Middle finger. 4. Index finger, 5. Thumb, 6. Wrist, 7. Elbow, 8. Shoulder, 9. Left breast. 10. Right breast. Another method of counting was accomplished with string or rope. For example, in the early 16th century, the Incas used a complex form of string. Knots for accounting and sundry other reasons, such as calendars or messages. These recording strings were called kipus, with units represented by knots on the strings. Special officers of the king called kipukamiaks, or keepers of the knots, were responsible for making and reading the kipus. What is a limit of a sequence? The limit of a sequence is simply the number that represents a kind of equilibrium reached in the sequence. It is also phrased approaches as closely as possible. Limit is also a term used in calculus in relation to a function, see elsewhere in this chapter. How can one visualize Pascal's triangle using algebra? One way of looking at Pascal's triangle is through its connection to algebra. For example, expand, or remove the brackets around, the expression, 1 plus x, 2 equals, 1 plus x, 1 plus x equals 1 plus 2x plus x2. The same can be done with a cube, for example, 1 plus x, 3 equals, 1 plus x, 1 plus x, 1 plus x, equals, 1 plus x. 1 plus 2x plus x2, equals 1 plus 3x plus 3x2 plus x3, and even the expression, 1 plus x, 4, 
which equals 1 plus 4x plus 6x2 plus 4x3 plus x4. The coefficients. The numbers in front of the x's, in the results are the connection. For the first example, the coefficients are 1, 2, 1, for the second one. 1, 3, 3, 1, and for the last expression, the coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. These, of course, are the third, fourth, and fifth lines from Pascal's triangle. What does it mean if a series is convergent? Convergence of a series is related to the convergence of a sequence, but don't confuse them. The convergence of the sequence of partial sums, usually written as SN, differs greatly from the convergence of a sequence of numbers, usually written as XN. For example, the series XN, and its associated sequence of partial sums or SN, is convergent if and only if the sequence SN is convergent. What were some contributions John Haldane made to genetics? Scottish geneticist John Burton Sanderson Haldane, 1892-1964, along with Sir Ronald Aylmer Fisher, 1890-1962, and Sewell Greenwright, 1889-1988, developed population genetics. Among other contributions, Haldane's famous book The Causes of Evolution, 1932 was the first major work of what came to be known as the modern evolutionary synthesis. It made use of Charles Darwin's theory of the evolution of species by natural selection. Presented in terms of the mathematical consequences of Gregor Mendel's theory of genetics. To form the basis for biological inheritance. What is the calculus? The calculus is a branch of mathematics that deals with functions. Another name for calculus is infinitesimal analysis. It evaluates constantly changing quantities, such as velocity and acceleration. Values interpreted as slopes of curves, and the area, volume, and length objects bounded by curves. Remember, curves can also mean straight lines. It involves infinite processes that lead to passage to a limit, or the approaching of an ultimate, usually desired value. The tools of the calculus include differentiation, differential calculus, or finding a derivative, and integration, integral calculus, or finding the indefinite integral, both of which are foundations for mathematical analysis. Who was Alan Turing? British mathematician Alan Matheson Turing, 1912 to 1954.
was the first person to propose the idea of a simple computer. Called the Turing machine, its operation was limited to reading and writing symbols on tape. Moving the tape to the left or right to read the symbols one at a time. This invention is often considered the start of the computer age. In fact, the definition of the word computable is a problem that can be solved by a Turing machine. Turing was also instrumental in interpreting and deciphering encrypted German messages using the Enigma cipher machine. For more information on computers, see Math in Computing. What are perpendicular, orthogonal, normal, and tangent lines? Lines are also classified by their relationship to other angles and lines. Perpendicular lines are two lines, segments, or rays that intersect to form a right, 90 degree, angle. Orthogonal lines are another way of saying lines are perpendicular but it is mostly used in terms of functions. Transformations, and vectors in other mathematical fields. Normal lines are perpendicular lines where each line is perpendicular to a curve. Including a line, or a surface, including a plane. And finally, a line is considered to be tangent to a circle if it intersects the circle at exactly one point also called the point of tangency. Such lines are also called tangential lines. Who invented a way of analyzing syllogisms? In 1880 English logician John Venn, 1834-1923, presented a method to analyze syllogisms. Now known as Venn diagrams. Venn initially criticized such diagrams in works by his contemporaries. Especially those of English mathematicians George Boole, 1815-1864, and Augustus de Morgan, 1806-1871. But in 1880, Venn introduced his own, now famous, version of the diagrams in his paper on the diagrammatic and mechanical representation of prepositions and reasonings. By 1881, along with correcting Boole's work, Venn further elaborated on the diagrams in his book Symbolic Logic. Today we are most familiar with Venn diagrams in connection with understanding sets. Although Venn is credited with the diagrams, he was not the first person to use such geometric methods to represent syllogistic logic. German mathematician Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, 1646-1716, used such graphic representations in his work. And even Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler, 1707-1783, is known to have presented diagrams that had a definite Venish look a century before John Venn. What do blood pressure numbers mean? Blood pressure is a measure of how much the blood presses against the walls of the arteries. 
This creates two forces, the first comes from when the heart pumps blood into the arteries. The second is the force of the arteries to resist the blood flow. When a person takes a blood pressure, he or she is taking a ratio, the higher number, called the systolic or top number. Represents the pressure when the heart contracts to pump blood to the body, the lower number. Called the diastolic or bottom number, represents the pressure when the heart relaxes between beats. For example, for a blood pressure of 120-76, said, 120 over 76. The systolic reading is 120 and the diastolic reading is 76. In actuality, the numbers represent how high the blood's pressure would force a column of mercury to rise in a tube. For example, a systolic reading of 120 means the mercury would rise 120 millimeters. Usually labeled MMHG, with HG the symbol for mercury, in a tube. Based on the most recent information, and it keeps changing, a blood pressure below 120-80 is considered optimal for adults. 120 to 139 over 80 to 89 is considered pre-hypertension. Anything over 140-90 is considered hypertension, which includes three stages. With the highest hypertension reading, stage 3, being anything above 179 slash 109. Have computers been used to determine the value of pi? Yes, computers have been used to determine the value of pi. But no computer has yet found the final number in the long progression of numbers. They probably never will, because pi is considered to be an infinite number. But for the sake of just trying, larger and faster computers are often used for this task. To date, pi has been found to more than 6 billion places. For more about Pi, see Mathematics Throughout History. What is a proposition in mathematical logic? A proposition in mathematical logic is a statement that can be proven to be either true or false. For example, if you say, the bear is black, that is a proposition, but the statement the bear is X. Can't be true or false until a particular value for X is chosen, therefore, it is not a proposition. What is the difference between probability and odds? Probability is usually expressed as a fraction, sometimes as a percentage. For example, if there are 10 pieces of fruit in a jar 3 apples and 7 oranges then the probability of taking out an orange is 7 tenths, or 7 chances of an orange out of a total of 10 chances. On the other hand, odds are expressed as the number of chances for or against, versus the number of chances against, or for. Thus, if there are 3 chances of picking an apple and 7 chances of picking an orange, 
the odds are 7 to 3 against you picking an apple. Just reverse this to find the odds in favor, or, in this example. The odds would be 3 to 7 in favor of picking an apple. In order to convert the odds to probability, just add the chances. Thus, if the odds against a horse winning the Kentucky Derby are 4 to 1, that means that out of 5, or 4 plus 1, chances, the horse has one chance of winning. That makes the probability of the horse winning one-fifth, or 20%. What is differences of squares? Differences of squares is another way to factor an expression into a form that is essentially something to subtracted from something to mathematically, an equation that resembles a 2x2b2 is a difference of squares and can be factored into ax and b, ax b, with the factors being identical, except for the sign. This, in turn, equals ax, ax, abx and abx b2. The two middle terms, abx and and abx, further cancel each other out. Resulting in a 2x2b2 which results in a way of factoring called the difference of squares. For example, take the expression 16s2. From the above. We know that the form, a 2x2b2, equals, ax and b, ax b. Thus, by substitution, and if a equals 1, x2 equals 16, and b equals s, we can say that 16 s2 equals 4 plus s, 4 s, with the resulting factoring of the equation using difference of squares. How is political polling done? Although polls seem to be magical predictors of election results or the success of product advertising. They are merely a matter of taking information and applying some simple statistics. Polling is a technique that uncovers the attitudes or opinions of a segment of the population. And is based on certain questions about politics, the economy, and even social conditions. The sample population can be chosen randomly, or by other methods. People can be polled via a telephone interview, questionnaire in the mail, or personal interview. Such as an exit poll during an election, polled as a person leaves his or her voting place. Statistics such as averaging and resulting percents are then used to determine the overall pulse of the public. Many commercial poll takers not only claim their results help in market research and advertising, but also get the people's concerns out in the open. Of course, just because statistics are used does not make polling infallible, or even reliable. For example, some questions may be misleading. What types of mathematics are used in engineering? Mathematics is definitely a necessity in engineering. 
especially the fields of algebra, geometry, calculus, and statistics. Certain divisions of engineering rely on variations of mathematics, including combinations of arithmetic, algebra, geometry, calculus, differential equations. Probability and statistics, complex analysis, and others. For example, civil and structural engineers use a great deal of linear algebra and work with matrices. Mechanical engineers use logs and exponents, calculus, differential equations, and probability, and statistics. And a chemical engineer uses such mathematics as algebra and geometry. Logs and exponents, integral calculus, and differential equations. What are the basic symbols used to operate on sets? When set theory founder George Cantor developed the symbols for sets, he used a single horizontal overbar to denote a set with no structure besides order, thus, it represented the order type of the set. A double bar meant that there was no order from the set, which is also called the cardinal number of the set, see below. What was one of the first devices used to measure time? One of the first devices smaller than the obelisks mentioned above to measure time was a crude sundial. By about 1500 BCE, the true, small sundial, or shadow clock, was developed in Egypt. It was divided into ten parts, with two twilight hours marked. But it could only tell time for half a day, afternoon. The sundial had to be turned 180 degrees to measure the afternoon hours. More refinements of measuring time occurred later. In order to correct for the sun's changing path over the sky throughout the year, the nomonor object that creates the shadow on the sundial had to be set at the correct angle, what we call latitude. Eventually, the sundial was perfected. Multiple designs were used. For example, shortly before 27 BCE the Roman architect Marcus Vitruvius Pollios, c. 90-20 BCE, de Architectura described 13 different designs of sundials. What are the atomic number and mass of an element? The atomic number is the number of protons in an atomic nucleus. The atomic mass of an atom usually measured in atomic mass units is the total mass of the atom or the combined mass of its protons and neutrons the mass of the electrons is negligible. The importance of atomic numbers and mass is simple, the atoms of each element has a specific atomic number and mass each determined by adding or subtracting protons and neutrons within the atom. Who developed the two alternatives to Euclidean geometry?
hyperbolic geometry was first announced by Russian mathematician Nikolai Ivanovich Lobachevsky, 1792-1856, also seen as Lobachevsky. In 1826, he challenged Euclid's fifth postulate that one and only one line parallel to a given line can be drawn through a fixed point external to the line. Instead, he developed a self-consistent system of geometry in which the flawed postulate was replaced by one allowing more than one parallel through the fixed point. This idea was already developed independently by Hungarian Janos, or Johann. Bolyai, 1802-1860, in 1823, after several attempts to prove the Euclidean parallel postulate. He developed his system by assuming that a geometry could be constructed without the parallel postulate. And German mathematician, physicist, and astronomer Carl Friedrich Gauss, 1777-1855, also seen as Johann Karl or Karl Friedrich Gauss. In 1816. But, as often happens in science and mathematics, the person who publishes an idea first gets most of the credit, this time, Lobachevsky was the first to publish. What is a game? A game is a recreational activity that involves a conflict resulting in gains and losses between two or more opponents. Although some games can involve one player acting alone. In general, all games must have a goal that the players are trying to reach. And the opponents must follow strict, formal rules that determine what the players can or can't do within the game. If any of the rules are broken during the game, it is often referred to as a foul or, at its worst, cheating. The study of games is also a branch of mathematics and logic that is called game theory. In game theory, games can be simple and solved with mathematics. That result in a complete solution, result of the game. It also includes the analysis of more complex games, such as cards, chess, and checkers and can even be applied to real-world situations in economics, politics, and warfare. What culture took the first steps in the development of mathematical analysis? Mathematical analysis and, thus, the ideas of calculus took centuries to develop. Probably the first to present some solid concepts in the field were the Greeks whose most important contribution was the method of exhaustion, expanding the measurements of an area to take in more and more of the required area. For example, Zeno of Elia, C490 C425 BCE, based many problems on the infinite. Lucippus of Miletus, fluid C435 C420 BCE, Democritus of Abdera, 460 to 370 BCE. A student of Lucippus who also proposed an early theory about how the universe was formed, and Antiphon, C. 479 to 411 BCE, who some historians believe tried to square the circle, would all contribute to the method of exhaustion. Yudakus of Nidus, 
c 400 to 347 BCE, would be the first to use the method on a scientific basis. Archimedes, c 287 to 212 BCE, Hellenic. Considered one of the greatest Greek mathematicians took mathematical analysis one step further. He more fully developed the theory presented by Eudacus that would eventually lead to integral calculus. What is the historical significance of the golden ratio? It is thought that over the centuries many architects and painters used the golden ratio in their works. Some historians believe that the Great Pyramid of Cheops contains the golden ratio. The ancient Greeks knew about the golden ratio from their works in geometry. But they never truly believed it was as important as numbers such as pi. Many works of art in the Renaissance are thought to have used the golden ratio within paintings and sculptures. Although it may have been subconsciously incorporated into their compositions. In 1509 Luca Paciola published the work Divina Proportion. Which explored the mathematics of the golden ratio, along with its use in architectural design. Of course, humans aren't the only ones who practice the golden ratio. It is also seen in nature as the result of the dynamics of some systems. For example, the spacing of sunflower seeds and even the shape of the chambered nautilus shell are often claimed to be related to the golden ratio. What is a coordinate system? A coordinate system is one that uses coordinates a number or numbers that identify a point on a number line, plane, or in space. These points are most often seen on a graph and can be a combination of two. Numbers for a two-dimensional figure or three numbers for three dimensions. What is an indeterminate number? As with many other fields, Mathematics has terms that are sometimes confusing or overlapping. For example, it is interesting to note that there is such a number as 0 slash 0, which is called an indeterminate number. But be careful, this is not the same as an undefined number. If an indeterminate number comes up somewhere, you never know the value for your specific case and you can conceivably give it any number of values. How is temperature measured? Temperature is measured using a thermometer, Thermo meaning heat and meter meaning to measure. The inventor of the thermometer was probably Galileo Galilei, 1564 to 1642. Who used a device called the thermoscope to measure hot and cold. Temperatures are determined using various scales, the most popular being Celsius, Fahrenheit and Kelvin. 
invented by Swedish astronomer, mathematician, and physicist Anders Celsius. 1701-1744, in 1742, Celsius used to be called the centigrade scale. It can be capitalized or not, centigrade means divided into 100 degrees. He used 0 degrees Celsius to mark the freezing point of water. The point where water boils was marked as 100 degrees Celsius. Because of its ease of use, mainly because it is based on an even 100 degrees. It is the scale most used by scientists, it is also the scale most associated with the metric system. Fahrenheit is the scale invented by Polish-born German physicist Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit. 1686-1736, in 1724, his thermometer contained mercury in a long, thin tube, which responded to changes in temperatures. He arbitrarily decided that the difference between water freezing and boiling 32 degrees. Fahrenheit and 212 degrees Fahrenheit, respectively would be 180 degrees. The Kelvin scale was invented in 1848 by Lord Kelvin, 1824-1907, who was also known as Sir William Thomson, Baron Kelvin of Largs. His scale starts at 0 degrees Kelvin, a point that is also known as absolute zero. The temperature at which all molecular activity ceases and the coldest temperature possible. His idea was that there was no limit to how hot things can get, but there was a limit to how cold. Kelvin's absolute zero is equal to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, or minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. So far, scientists believe nothing in the universe can get that cold. 